Louise Redknapp, pop star, TV presenter, wife, mother. She's a gorgeous size eight. Perfect. Or maybe not. Today's world of celebrity, glamour and success has become obsessed by size zero, a UK size four. Can this woman really be two sizes too big? I hope to have a daughter one day and I really feel strongly that I want my daughter to grow up in a world, in a society where she can be whatever size she wants to be. And what would Louise have to go through to shrink to a size zero? She's going to find out what the lollipop ladies in LA really do to achieve this frightening goal. And she'll try to get there in just 30 days. As a husband and, and someone that cares about I, I thought, so what are you doing? Why are you doing this? It's a joke, you know? The lack of food is making me feel much more vulnerable as a person and out of control as a person. For the last 17 years, Louise Redknapp has been snapped and papped from every conceivable angle. The camera loves her trademark curves, but in today's super skinny climate, even she's not immune to the tyranny of thin. I grew up in entertainment industry, I went to stage school, always wanted to be in entertainment and I always have felt, even at a size 8, that I'm never quite been skinny enough, that it just you know, there's always, if I could have lost half a stone, it would have been better. These days, it seems you have to lose a lot more than half a stone to fit in with current fashions. I personally think that women in general are just under so much scrutiny in this day and age that it's getting ridiculous. So Louise is going to put normal life on hold to expose the size zero trend for what it can be. Unhealthy, unsexy, and definitely not the breeze super skinny celebs would have you believe. Before she starts the crash diet, Louise has agreed to something she's never done before. A photo shoot to record her pre-diet look with no stylist, no professional makeup, and no retouching. Fashion photographer Neil Genoa has snapped the likes of the Sugar Babes and Posh Spice. No breathing in, no breathing out. See, I haven't got the courtesy of normally when I do a photo shoot, I know that afterwards they're going to lengthen me and stretch me and make me look all skinny. And you haven't gorgeous. got that privilege. <laughs> I haven't got the privilege today. <laughs> That's great. Good. Do you find it easier to photograph skinnier models than more curvier ladies? You photograph in models, they walk in. At one point they were skinny, now they're walking in and they could be in, coming into a doctor's surgery instead of a photographic studio. It's such a shame because what they are, the young women of today want to become. So it's kind of like a real vicious circle, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's it. Can you see? Oh my God, so that's my shape. Does that seem strange? That's not the best, is it? I see myself in that form, it's not, I don't look at it and think, I actually look at it and think I could do with losing weight. Quite. Really? Yeah. But are you are you relating now to the images that you're familiar with seeing in yeah, magazines? Yeah, absolutely. And this is in your mind, yeah. and this is what you don't I see that, then that becomes a... I don't see myself in like workout clothes, posing with my hands on my <clears> hips, <throat> on a white background. If you were in a magazine looking like that, you wouldn't you look like the others. you yeah. Well, and there lies the problem probably, isn't it? Absolutely. See, my Great. husband's happy with that. Last night he, he said to me, he knew we were coming here today, he said, oh, whatever happens, please don't lose your boobs and bum. Naturally. <laughs> Otherwise you wouldn't be a woman. Then you get back to that androgynous situation, yeah. which... He was like, I'd be most upset. I said, well, don't worry, as quick as I lose it, I'll put it all back on. Yeah. So well, you're going to be without it for a couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck anyway. Brilliant, thank you. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Louise will start this diet weighing 7 stone 10. Her BMI, which is a measurement of fat to body mass, is a slim but healthy 19.4. Her bust is 32D. Her waist is 26 and a half inches. And her hips are just over 33 inches, making her a dress size 8. Louise will need to shed around a stone to become a size 4 or US size 0. Hi there. Would you like some breakfast? What would you like? Butterage? Toast or a 
massive. Everybody mm. in my life that's kind of full time in my life thinks I shouldn't do this. Mum, I know you're stressing about me um, doing this programme. <laughs> no, I am a bit, yeah. But well, it's only for, for me. I'm following this diet so I can talk honestly about it. I feel that I can't be objective about what I'm talking about unless I've experienced it a little bit. No, I understand that, but you just don't need to lose weight. No, I don't want but to I'm see not. you getting thinner and... It's just so I can explain to people the impact it had on my life for a few weeks. I mean, that is why I'm, no, why I'm following it. I'm worried that she'll go on the diet and eat, you know, get down another half a stone or a stone, I'm not sure how much, and quite like that, as, as young girls do, and, and want to stay that way, you know, and I don't think she needs to. I personally am not happy about her doing it, but I, if Louise is passionate about something, pretty much throughout her career, she's had to make big decisions. I think that one of the reasons I, I did like I did like that she was curvaceous, I like that, I, I, that's what I like. I'm, I personally wouldn't want to see the, um, I like to see the curves and if Louise becomes too skinny and I don't want to be able to feel her ribs and her rib case, that's, that's not, not what I like. I can't understand why she wants to do it, but I could also think, oh, are you mad, you know, it's hard. And I, I'm actually quite looking forward to being finished already and she hasn't even started yet. <laughs> Throughout her diet, Louise will be looked after by leading nutritional expert, Dr. Adam Carey. I've never looked after anybody who's crash started before. In fact, I frankly refuse to do it because when people do it, they actually put themselves at increased health risks. And in the long term, most of them end up in a much worse place than where they started for. But he's prepared to make an exception to expose the dangers of extreme dieting. I think the current vogue is macabre. I think it is obscene and it is very unhealthy. Hello. Please can have a seat. Thank you. Hi. I'm Dr. Adam Carey. Hello. Seat. You too. Put your coat in your bag down. Have a seat. Thank you. Extreme dieting can harm every system in the body. A limit has been set of 30 days and she must undergo full medical examinations throughout the process. To suggest that you're now going to go and lose a stone or more in weight, um, to me, is scary. The things that people notice when they go on these sorts of crash diets are that they often get very bad breath. I think it's going to put you at increased risk of getting an infection, so you may find you come out with a cough or a cold or a sore throat. And people commonly get sleep disturbances when they go through this sort of process. You pop yourself up onto the scales. When people lose weight, that the hormones that cause you to be fertile get suppressed. One of those hormones is called oestrogen. And when that hormone falls away, that hormone's a major support for your bones. It's Rosie. <laughs> okay. Um, it's also not just the muscles around your arms and legs that are affected, it's also the muscle around your heart. One of the things we know from anorexics is that they're at greater risk of having a heart attack. The longer I'm sitting here with you, I'm pleased it's only 30 days. The longer you're sitting here with me, I'm just hoping oh. that you'll leave here and you won't do it. Everything he said shocked me. <laughs> it's a shame that every woman in the country or every woman in the world that wants to lose weight and become really skinny, if they could all just have half an hour sat down with a doctor telling them exactly what's going to happen to them, I think you'd get very few of them that would carry on with it. <laughs> Louise's husband, Jamie, has his doubts about the idea, but is determined to be supportive. I'm just going to agree with you for the next six weeks. Six weeks? I'm not doing it for six weeks. Oh, I weeks. Is it then. Four. Oh, four weeks. Because I know... <laughs> I'm not that crazy. What we went through when we were trying for Charlie, you can get quite stressed and allow me the brunt of it, I think. You think? Where do you go from there? Huh? This is what I would like to know. How, how you so can this get... This is why I'm marrying. This is complimentary. The countdown to the toughest month of her life has begun. Louise heads to the home of Size Zero, LA, in search of a diet and exercise regime. I'm really looking forward to getting there. I've, I think that most, you know, there's a lot of people that go to LA to achieve the same thing, and that's fame. Um, a lot of ambitious people, a lot of competition, and much more so than in the UK.
and no one in LA raises the competitive stakes as high as Boot Camp Barry. This man has trained the likes of Terry Hatcher, Katie Holmes, and Jenny McCarthy. And now his latest client is Louise. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Nice I'm to good. meet nice you. Nice to meet you. You too. Are you ready for this? Are you excited? No. Are you nervous? <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm alright. Just go with the flow, you know. We're good. Have a go. When was the last time you worked out? About three weeks ago. It's gonna hurt. I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna hurt. Down you go! There you go! You're doing great. That was my first push up. Really? Ever. That was the worst push up ever! Yeah! 99 more to go. I'm still knackered and I've been out of there 10 minutes. I feel like I'm going to throw up. Barry's not only cracking the whip on Louise's exercise regime, he'll also be in charge of her diet. And okay. look at your fist and look at mine. That's your portion. And this is my portion. See, and see, that's the difference. I always wish to have bigger hands. <laughs> always. <Me too. laughs> Especially when it comes to chocolate cake. <laughs> Louise has a friend in L.A. who's been feeling the pressure, Denise Van Ayrton. Hello. Hello. How are you? Has he seen you? Yeah, look at you. Oh. Thank you. Denise has already experienced the size zero phenomenon firsthand. I mean, this is the land of size zero. That's the first thing I noticed when I came over. And before I started working, because I just, I came here first of all for a holiday, and it was amazing how many people said to me at that time, and I'm going back only six months ago, that I actually had people telling me that I needed to lose weight. <gasps> I met agents and I remember sitting in the Chateau Marmont, which is like the cool, trendy hangout that people go to, and Nicole Ritchie was sat two tables away from where I was sitting and she, she was so thin, like so tiny, I mean, it, it, I, I wanted to go over and feed her, you know, when you feel sorry for somebody and you're just thinking, you look ill, and I sat there with this agent guy and he said to me, you know, Hollywood's very competitive and this is what you're up against. And I looked <laughs> and I thought, do you know what? I'm not doing it. And he said to me, this is what you need. You're going to have to slim down because unfortunately here it is the look. And I just looked at him and I just thought, forget it. So I purposely ordered a massive bowl of spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> there you go. It, That's normal. <laughs> There's nothing there. There is, look, there is a roll. Oh, good. There is a roll. There is a roll. <laughs> I also had the British press as well. I mean, I was on holiday and they took a photograph of me sat by the swimming pool. And I was just, I'm on holiday. You know, when I go on holiday, I let everything hang out. It's not a fashion show for yeah, me. Yeah. And then when I returned to the UK, there was a picture of me, front page of a magazine, saying that I'm overweight and I've let myself go. And I was really angry about that because I like having my curves. I like having my bust, I like having my bum. It's just normal to be a woman and to have curves. Yeah. And the thing that really annoyed me about the last time I went home is that I, my goddaughter has just turned 14. And because it was in the magazine, it said that I was overweight, she started looking at herself and said, oh, does that mean I'm overweight? Yeah. So I think it's really irresponsible. Hi. Denise's story has made Louise even more determined to carry out her experiment. And to set herself a goal, she's decided to buy a size zero dress. Now, I remember when in the UK, if you was an eight, you were tiny, you know, an eight was just really small when, you, you know, that was, as a woman, to be an eight was, wow, you're an eight. Now an eight is just classed as really normal and it's, I think, if we keep moving the goalposts for women, what are we going to have left? We're not going to be women anymore, are we? Celebrity stylist Nicole Chavez is going to take her shopping. Right, so where do we start? I think we should go over here. Okay. That's tiny. That is tiny. I can get my boobs in there. Okay, right, let's do it. We can try these two on. Yeah. Okay. It's very, very tight, and I can't get the sit down off. So, um, you know, look, and I can't breathe. 
But it's cute. I like this dress. Is it fitting me? <laughs> Which you made me one day. <laughs> oh no, this one I really can't get done up. It's a workout. It's a workout. <laughs> get the dress on. I don't think I'd get into this even in 30 days. I can't pull it anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm fed up with trying size zeros on now. Can I have, can I have some proper clothes, please? <laughs> Louise can't find anything she likes. Zeros. Well, will you do me a favour? Because obviously I have to go home soon. But I would really <laughs> like a dress from here. Yeah. Something that's a bit different. Um, would you carry on looking for me? Sure, I'll um, spend. I'll you kind of know what I'm, I'm looking for, I think, yeah, now. Yeah. Coming up next, the size zero regime starts. I have a very empty trolley. <laughs> <laughs> you want a size zero. How much do you want to stick in your trolley? And the problems begin. I'm really crappy with Jamie. I keep on shouting at Charlie. I know I don't know if everyone's going to want to carry on living with me at this rate. Louise Redknapp is about to start a 30-day crash diet to get to size zero. Over the last five years, stars have been dramatically shrinking. Curvy Superman star Terry Hatcher is now a bony, desperate housewife. What are these women doing to themselves? Some celebs would have us believe skinny is a healthy byproduct of success. But is it in fact a deeply destructive trend? Louise is about to find out, because tomorrow the diet begins. Hey. But before her starvation diet and exercise program kicks in, there's time for one last family meal. What's the hardest thing you're going to have to face, you think? I just think that living the lifestyle, the training, dreading the training. This would be hard, not being able to come and do this. <laughs> and I love just, you know, coming out and having food out and, you know? Eating with you and Bubs. I couldn't do it. Adam? I couldn't do it. What, the diet at all? No. Diet D-Day has arrived, and so has boot camp Barry. He's flown over from LA to kickstart Louise's regime. <laughs> Good morning! Oh no! <laughs> Why Hello. fear the inevitable? <laughs> I'm good. All right. I'm good. How's the kitchen? Barry takes no prisoners when it comes to carbs. So, do you do you have stock in pasta? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you invested in a pasta company? Do you know what? It's one of those things, you know, when you go shopping, you just pick up and you don't actually need any more. But my son does love pasta and it's really... Clearly. My dogs like it too. Your dogs? <laughs> What is this? Carbohydrates Anonymous? Or is it? Oh, it's a promos? cupboard. I'm not going to keep veg and fish and chicken and well, stuff no, but in the cupboard. This is nothing but. Oh, look. Oh, these are okay. <laughs> oh, am I allowed to? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. You could use a few less carbs. Perfect. Now the cupboards are carb free, Barry takes Louise to restock with size zero rations. <laughs> And he's putting her on a very simple, if sparse, low-carb diet. Oats and omelette for breakfast, berries, but not after 11 a.m., fish and greens for lunch, and supper. It is as long as it's green. I see lots of colours. So no colour. We all want colours. Hello. Why can't you have colour? They're just the higher carb and the higher calorie. Oh, it's just easier just to go green. Okay, I can see lots of green here. Berries are a good fruit. Strawberries? Strawberries, blueberries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries. Okay. Just remember what your portion is. Fist. Maybe Asparagus small. is great, those are fine. Now, ready meals are a no-no. Ready meals are a big no-no. Okay, milk is out, right? Milk is so out. Um, no yogurts? No, no. Yogurt is dairy. I have a very empty trolley. <laughs> <laughs> you want a size zero? Can I get some Croutons soy milk or not? No, 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 no. How come no? no <laughs> Just no. no. 30 days. Right. This is my favorite. Bye bye. Maybe I'll say goodbye to donuts. <laughs> I'd say goodbye to all of it. You could say that goodbye to aisles 3 through 12. <laughs>
<laughs> You've got 30 days. If this was a life plan, you know, I wouldn't freak out over the one biscuit. But she's given me 30 days to change herself into a size zero. I need to freak out over the biscuit. <laughs> On these minuscule rations, Louise must complete a commando-style workout every day. Barry sets a regime of a three-mile run plus an hour of weight. I hate exercising. I hate it. I just find it so boring. Now, can you sink down more? Because it's ass. <laughs> Chest up. Straight spine. There you go. Sink down. Lower more. Below my hand. Good. Yes! Good. Five. Ten seconds. Nine. Lower. Eight. Seven. Six. Good. Five. Stay with it. Four. Three. Two. One. Yes! Big difference. Mm -hmm. but you know when it's a good time to keep your abs in? All the time. On the way up, push the butt forward. Yeah, and I'm killing your sex life for a good four days. Oh, great. <laughs> Possibly five. It's really easy for a guy to, or with no family to say, you know, of course you can. You can get up and come in here at five o'clock in the morning. You know, where does your day end and start? I mean, I'm not bionic woman. I'll be checking on you. But Louise is going to have to dig deep. The next day, she's up at the crack of dawn to do her workout. Then, it's straight off to present the clothes show. The diet is already proving harder than Louise imagined. I do feel like I'm about to drop, I have to say. I feel physically exhausted. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm close to raiding a minibar somewhere. Backstage, Louise is beginning to appreciate the reality behind the glamour of the catwalk. I used to be chased around my Paris agency with a tennis. Really? Every time that I walked in. And it was, that was quite tough because I was so young at the time that it really no, got to me. Yeah. I only worked, I spent three months there, I worked once, and I was constantly told the too fat. They wanted to see bones. They really? wanted, they wanted, I used to hear horror stories about the bookers coming in, and this is at my agency, bookers coming into the fridge of where you're staying and taking out all of the food that they really didn't agree with that you should be eating. Oh, I know two girls that have gone completely anorexic and really painfully anorexic. It's not them being size eight, size six, they've gone under that. Where yeah. It's just, they're ill. Yeah. Really ill. For years, the fashion industry promoted emaciated as aspirational. But recently, things have got very out of hand. Last year, two catwalk models, Luisa Ramos and Anna Carolina Reston, died as a result of eating disorders. Despite these tragedies, Skinny is still being actively promoted as beautiful. The clothes the designers make are the size you have to be. So if you don't fit the clothes, they can't book you. It doesn't matter if they like you or not. Yeah. It's them who start off with it. And when I went to Paris, most of the clothes were tiny. Like I remember someone telling me I had fat arms, which I couldn't believe. <laughs> I was like, if anything, my arms. The model shocking stories have deeply unsettled Louise. How can the fashion industry justify its hunger for size zero? Ex-supermodel agent Jonathan Pang, who's represented the likes of Jodie Kidd and Naomi Campbell, is a vocal defender of the super slim catwalk look. Would you as an agent ever say you had a lovely, slim, gorgeous girl and you set her on a casting and you felt that she was very, very slim and naturally right where she should be mm. and they phoned you up and said, we really like her but she's not skinny enough. Would Let's you say then... a girl, a really top girl could make, say, a quarter of a million pounds doing one collection right in, in London, Paris and Milan and New York. So that's quite a lot of money. And if she has to lose an inch or two on her hips to get that money and to be successful and to say, OK, I've got a diet if I want to make this work, I don't see a problem with that. Some designers are aware of the controversial girls that they are using in their collection, but it's about column inches. They want to make sure that they get the front cover of a newspaper or it you know, needs to be covered. Designers want to make an impact on the outside with their outfit and their creation coming down a catwalk. And the sad reality is an outfit is just tends to look better on somebody that is taller and more willowy rather than shorter and wider. And if Louise is ever going to become willowy herself, she's got to find time to do more exercise. 
I've got to go to the gym. I only did an hour this morning, so I'm, I haven't quite finished what I've been set. And it's just mad. I just can't believe that I've got to go to the gym at 9.30. It's kind of a bit soul-destroying. You know, you think, God, oh, how far do I have to go to, to lose a few pounds? And as the diet progresses into its fourth day, Louise is settling into a mind-numbing routine. It's worse as, at the end of the day, to be really honest, when it's about 7, 8 o'clock, and I feel really hungry by then. And I've just been going to bed really early. It's either that or eat. All of a sudden, having to have a bit of plain salad, I almost... <laughs> almost doesn't do anything for me at all. So I, I struggle. So the, the best thing I eat throughout the whole day is this. That single egg omelette has to fuel her through a full-on Barry workout. So I'm halfway through my three miles and the really just, I don't know, I can't put it stupid, but the most ridiculous thing is afterwards I'm meant to do Barry's workout video. I feel like he's watching me. It's all very heavy, it's all very really intense so trying to do reps of like a hundred after a three mile run she struggles on trying to cope with family life i'm on my way to pick charlie up it means so much to me because anyone that's a working mum you grab on to you know the hours that you get together um, and I think that is most probably one of my biggest worries about following this diet, that I've become a bit narky and just short-tempered with him because he doesn't know what's going on. There's no let-up, including even more exercise when Charlie wants to go out for a walk. Lou will cope with whatever's thrown at her, but I think she's struggling. You know, being with her and being so close to her, I think that she's found it very hard, especially looking after a, a, um, a child, a two-year-old that's very active, and a, you know, a husband and a family, uh, and all the things it has to do, going to the gym all the time, I think that's been hard for her, especially in all hours of the day to work out, um, and on an empty stomach most of the time. On her return, Louise finds that the size zero dress has finally arrived from L.A., it's tiny. It's got something like a 23 inch waist, which is just incredible because it's, it's a kind of sizing that I do think of as a young girl. Um, and I, I did have a little try on, and I'm not like a million miles away, but I can't get the sip done up. Um, and it is extremely tight. So if I wore it as it is at the moment, I'd have to go out with it undone. <laughs> But Louise is definitely losing weight. In the first week, she's lost six pounds and now weighs seven stone four. Her BMI is 18.5. 18 is seen as dangerously underweight. Her bust has gone down to a 32C. Her waist has shrunk by just over an inch. And her dress size is now between a six and an eight. Louise has a meeting with her agent, who is becoming increasingly worried about her. But eating in restaurants has turned from a pleasure into a pain. I'm going to be a real nightmare. <laughs> always, no always a nightmare. Um, I'm following a really ridiculous diet, so I wondered, on the blackboard there was fish and vegetables. Could I just get... The cod, yeah. Yeah, the cod with the steamed vegetables. I feel like I've got nothing to look forward to. I know that sounds really mad, but it's just boring. I'm just... I'm just... Lovely, thank you. Thank you very much. And the fish there. Lovely. Thank you very much. That's great. Thank you. Thanks. I feel guilty eating this in front of you. I know. Say shit. I suppose you're conscious of everything that you're, every last thing that you're eating, everything that passes your lips. All I've eaten is vegetables because I can't even stomach to. But you must be feeling dreadful. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up in part three, Louise hears the disturbing revelations of a former super skinny pop star. Having an eating disorder is the most miserable existence. And the true horrors of size zero begin to hit home.
I think it's just showing me that it's just ridiculous. You've just got to have a healthy, normal lifestyle. Louise Redknapp is beginning the second week of a 30-day extreme diet and exercise regime. She wants to explore the dangers of the super skinny trend and ultimately fit in a size zero dress. It just looks so incredibly small. I just, I don't know. I, I try not to think about it too much because I think if I place too much emphasis on actual weight loss, I don't think I'll get there. I think it's got to be about the journey and how hard it is and how getting from A to B you know, it's proving to be very unglamorous um, and everything that I wouldn't want my life to be. She has got three weeks to go, but she is already seeing results. So I've lost a whole inch off of the bus. And the first place you lose weight is where you don't want to. <laughs> this isn't what I want in life. There's a reason. So therefore, I've got good people looking after me, overseeing the whole process. It's a month, it's an experiment. What is kind of really sad that other people, young girls or women at home, write this down and try and get there with no expert advice and they do it for a long period of time because I think it made them quite ill. Ever more aware of how easy it is to fall into this trap, Louise accepts an invitation to visit Rhodes Farm, the first unit in the world dedicated to treating children with eating disorders. Hello. Hi guys, you all alright? Yeah. Can I come in for a chat? Yeah. <laughs> How old are you all? Uh, I'm 15. 16 next week. This whole size zero thing is really in the press at the moment. What do you make of it? I think it's sick. Yeah. I think designers make the dresses for the models and they're just like us. They're, they're like, that's their job, therefore that's what they have to do and be that size. And they get pressured and because they get pressured we feel pressure. And we look in magazines and that and it's just that's what keeps it going, that's what keeps the circle going around. If the designers made like dresses that were size 10 or size 12 or whatever, or whatever the size is, then, you know, the models wouldn't feel as much pressure. Girls, how bad has it actually got for you guys? And I just remember every day being so depressed and just wanting to die. All I wanted to do was die or be someone else. I always wanted to be someone else. Like, whenever my mum, like, said to me, you know, she was like, oh, Pippa, and I was like, just, you know, don't call me that. I don't want to be that person anymore. Because I just, I just hated it, you know, getting up every morning and I was just like, oh, well, here we go, another day when all I've got to do is think about food. Yes, to the point where, like, you won't even drink water or anything like that, your parents are kind of like, oh, you know, you've just done loads of sport, have a glass of water, and it's like, no, 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 I can't. And they're like, why? And you're like, because I don't want to, and then that's when it becomes kind of obvious. You've that worried that water will put weight on you? Like, you I always had this thing with like toothpaste. I couldn't have toothpaste. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, how can it taste so good and not have any calories in it? I hate to see young girls going through such hard time because you all deserve to be happy. Content off now. Oh, I can't bear it. Look, you're all going through a problem and I'm the one crying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think that when you come and you, you talk to people that are actually going through it first hand, you know, it's, it, it's sad and you're all at the prime of your life and, you know, I wish I could just make it all better for you. Yeah. But I can't. <laughs> it's quite hard that there's a 12-year-old, you know, sitting there talking about things and I think 12 is... You know, I look at 12 as so young. It's day 11, and Louise is starting to get irritable. 
Crash dieting starves the brain of nutrients and can cause irritability and depression. As Louise is finding, the constant feeling of hunger only makes the situation worse. I am really hungry today. I've had like hardly anything all day today. Um, yeah, and I'm, I feel a bit kind of sick to be honest today. A bit peckish. What do you want for dinner, bub? Pasta? Yeah. You have pasta all the time. You want pasta? My bones ache, my really difficult to prepare other people's food because when you're hungry there's nothing worse than not being able to eat the food you're preparing. Pardon? No more, 100% no more sweeties. Everything's just... I just don't know how people do this. I don't know how people live on such small amounts of food and when you don't have to. She's getting on with it okay, but her energy levels are dropping. I'm starting to notice her, um, she's starting to become a little bit sharp, a bit snappier because she's not happy that she's not eating enough, but she's very difficult to live with. But she's a strong character and she's, as much as I'm trying to talk her out of it, she keeps wanting to do it. I'm hoping Jamie's going to eat out tonight. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. It's just one less bit of torture. Yeah, I'm struggling today a bit, actually. That night, Louise admits she's more than struggling. She's becoming downright grumpy. Um, I'm really crappy with Jamie. I keep on shouting at Charlie, which I hate doing because he hasn't really done anything wrong. My patience is just a little bit short. And now even the dogs are starting to get screamed at, and they really don't do anything wrong. So, um... And no, I don't know if everyone's going to want to carry on living with me at this rate. Size zero is today's label, but the pressure to be thin has been accelerating for many years, as one celebrity knows all too well. I'm just on my way to go and meet Mel C, which I'm actually really looking forward to, because I think she's somebody that can give me a real insight on what it's like to be really young and feel really pressured to be a certain size, you know, to be skinny. If you want to be my lover, you have got to give, taking it too easy. Spice girl Mel C suffered with an eating disorder during her years in the spotlight. Hello. Hello. How are you? Okay. I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How's everything right. going? Yes. Not bad. Okay. <laughs> Bit hungry. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, bad. You were on loads of walls all over the world mm. and the young girls wanted to be you and the other girls. Yeah. And little did they know you had a serious eating disorder. Mm. I started to think, I have to be perfect, but I have to be the absolute best that I can be to be worthy yeah. of this crown. And, and then, you know, the eating, it just got more and more ridiculous, really, yeah. from, you know, not eating naughty things I, you know, got to a point where I wouldn't eat carbohydrates, I got to a point where I wouldn't eat protein and basically for a few years, probably around the time when we did Spice World the movie, I think I was living on, I didn't have any fat in my diet at all, it was steamed vegetables and fre you know, fresh fruit. Mel's illness then went into reverse and the press were merciless. And I think at my heaviest I was about a size 14. Um, but, you know, they would have had people believe that I was obese. And you can't win. You're either yeah. slightly too big yeah. or you're, you're slightly too small. But it's, I think that's what needs to be stopped. I think the media have a lot of responsibility. And I think that role models have a lot of responsibility. And, you know, earlier you were saying about, you know, there were so many girls, had posts on the walls. And when I look back now, I actually feel really bad. Do you know what, Louise? I think having an eating disorder is the most miserable existence that yeah. you can have mm. because it's all you think about you know you're thinking about avoiding social situations yeah. where you have to eat with people you know so you have no social life you become I mean I became almost reclusive how did you live I have no idea it, it must have just you know I paid for it yeah I've paid for it big time Mel's feelings of self-imposed isolation have struck a chord with Louise I'm so bored already. It's Saturday night. I haven't gone out with my husband or my friends. Um, I'm in. I've had a really crappy, tiny dinner. 
which kind of consisted of nothing. And um, now I'm going to the gym again for the second time. The start of week three, and Louise is falling behind on her exercise regime. So she packs Charlie off with Jamie. Come we going. And once again heads down the dreaded gym with only Winnie the dog for company. He's the one that should be blooming dieting, fat ass over there. On the treadmill. Chuck Winnie, on the treadmill. There you go. Come on. Get running. Oh, get your leg up. Go on, you can do it. Oh, that's it. Louise may have lost a shocking seven pounds in just over two weeks, but she's more worried about Jamie's reaction to her new look. I try not to let him um, give me a cuddle because even though you can't probably see it, my ribs and that are, for me, are really protruding and it's one thing he hates, he can't bear it. He's like, oh, so I know that if he doesn't touch it, he won't have a moan at me. Louise is back to see Dr Adam Carey for her midway check. Well, I guess first off, how are you? Um, I've definitely been better. As usual, Louise has a thorough medical. I've got a bit of cold, um, don't sleep very well. Um, my skin has gone really dry, very flaky, I'm very dark under the eyes. Um, and also quite, you know, cramps in my stomach, which is quite painful as well. So, obviously, I don't want to put myself... Simple advice. Yeah. Is stop. <laughs> it's really simple advice. You've had a crazy amount of weight loss for such a small person. Your body mass index has gone from on the edge of being healthy to becoming, you know, on the edge of being frankly unhealthy. This is all bad, bad news. And my, you know, my firm recommendation would be to stop it now. Actually, at the moment, you're losing about 50% of the weight loss is fat and 50% of the weight loss is muscle. And it means that when you go back to re-eat, we have to be very careful because if you go back and re-eat normally, then you're, because your energy is smaller, you don't need so much fuel for it. So if you put back in what you normally had, then actually more of, your, uh, more of the weight that you store will become fat initially, rather right. than muscle mass. So you're going to end up fatter? Yes. And as you lose muscle and fat, right, you're getting yourself into a worse and worse state. And after this process, I really mean it, after this process... I'm going to end up with an eating disorder. I know it. This, this is the reality. This, uh, this is not a joke. Many, many people think, right, just like you thought, you could do this for a month, become a size zero, then the next month you could go back and be completely normal again. So what kind of thing have I got to eat when I finish this diet? We'll talk about it when you tell me you've finished. That's a real risk. This is not a cheap thrill film. No, you're telling me. If you want to stop today, it's good by me. I'd love to. If you didn't feel like this, I'd be worried. I'd be worried that there was something really wrong with you. I think it's just shown me that it's just ridiculous. You've just got to have a healthy, normal lifestyle and that all this kind of extreme dieting and cutting out huge food groups out of your diet and depriving yourself of what your body needs is just ludicrous. So even for me to have a reaction like this to what I've just heard is actually very different for me, which I've think proves obviously the lack of food is making me feel much more vulnerable as a person and out of control as a person. But Louise feels so strongly about the size zero issue that she's determined to continue with the diet in spite of Dr. Carey's strong warnings. I feel really passionately that women uh, are not meant to be emaciated. We know uh, we know they don't function as women being emaciated. We know it affects their fertility, it'll affect their sex life, it affects them emotionally, it affects them in all sorts of ways that make women function normally. That cannot be healthy. By the end of week three, 
Louise has lost a total of nine pounds and now weighs in at seven stone one. Her BMI is dangerously low at 18. Her bust has shrunk again to a 32B. Her waist is down by two inches and her hips by an inch. Her dress size is now a UK six. Coming up in part four, Louise hits rock bottom. I just feel absolutely awful. I can't work, I can't function. And it's back to LA for the final push. Louise Redknapp is in the final week of a 30-day crash diet. Her aim is to demonstrate how unhealthy and emotionally destructive the whole size zero trend is. I hope to have a daughter one day, and I really feel strongly that I want my daughter to grow up in a world, in a society, where she can be whatever size she wants to be and be happy. And, and I feel that the way our society is going is that is becoming harder and harder. Louise is clear about why she is on this dangerous journey, but as supportive as Jamie wants to be, he's still finding it difficult. I think it's harder for me than what it is for Louise. <gasps> I can't believe you said that. <laughs> you see this pleasant Louise when the cameras are off. I have been a bit crabby. Hey, what can you eat tonight? Um, I've got vegetables tonight. I've had tuna salad for lunch. I've had a good day today. But, but you have to remember, and everybody's forgetting, I'm only doing this for a little while. This, this, this will be over as quick what as it started. You've got to take this too seriously. These are actually quite good. And this is from a lot of girls. They actually think they look good. And men don't like that. I don't know any man about the skinny landing. Well, I don't think you can say that. So I'm by no means at a level where I'm in love with my body. Right, yeah, I'm going to dish up. Bob! Things are falling down. Come! I find it quite hard to sit there with them while they're eating theirs and not want a bit. <laughs> Lovely as well. <laughs> so, it is... You know, it's quite tough. Her only escape seems to be the routine of the gym. Just have a little patience. Still hanging from a love I love. She's worked out hard every day for three weeks and needs fresh motivation. If I bring the dress down, we're like a nutcase. Um, it just makes you, it just gives you that extra, come on, I've got ten more minutes to go, I can do it. It just gives me a little kind of, this is what I'm doing, I need to try and fit into it. Beginning of week four, and Louise has plateaued at seven stone one, and she's still got to shift half an inch off her waist and bust to reach size zero. So the pressure's on. I don't think I'll fit into that bloody dress, no. It's tiny. Oh, I can't try the dress on. Because I think if I try it on and I'm nowhere near, it will make me feel what I've done has been a complete waste of time. I'm frightened then I might just pull the plug on the whole thing. Desperate for a break, Louise decides to hook up with her best friend from stage school. Sophie suffered with severe anorexia during her teenage years, so Louise knows she can have a proper chat about what she's going through. Why do I keep crying on the diet? Because I feel like crazy so low, that's because you're so, I think you just become so low and so kind of a little bit obsessive about everything else. Everything. But yeah. I question, every, I, yeah. I've been questioning ridiculous things. Yeah, and I think you just, because your brain, obviously you need food to function fully in every part of your body, but your brain is such a massive part of that. And once you, your chemicals in your brain start dropping, then you become a bit depressed and a bit low. It sounds really crazy, but when you just go out with maybe sort of Jamie, you invite, mm. we'll go out for dinner with another couple, and you do find yourself checking yourself out. Yeah. You know, since someone else's wife or something. Yeah, it is it's very awful. much. I think, I don't know, I don't know why we do that as women. It's so yeah, yeah. The diet seems to play on Louise's insecurities. Everything. But she's not alone. 90% of all teenage girls are worried about their weight. So Louise decides to return to her and Sophie's old stage school, Italia Conti, 
to warn the pupils against the horrors of crash dieting. Twenty years ago when I started, there wasn't a huge amount of emphasis on our weight. We were all aware because we were all dancers and we were wearing leotards and tights every day, so we were all aware to be careful, but it was never really a big issue or wasn't really spoke about. So it'd be really interesting to see if it's different twenty years on. Constantly like everywhere you say like the size zero, being small is like the fashion, if you know what I mean. So if you're not like generally that small, that's sort of when you start to think, oh, Makes you well, I don't want to be the odd one out. Do any of you know anybody that's had an eating disorder? Yeah. 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 So it's <laughs> mad, you all know somebody, there's not many of you in here, but you all know somebody, so it just shows. My friend from another performing arts school, she was in the girl, they were all in a group of girls in the toilets, and she was teaching another group how to throw up their food, and I just think, I thought to myself that it's just so sad that they feel they have to do that. Yeah. But it's like teaching it as if it's something great. Before I did this diet, I would have looked at anybody that I was kind of wanting to look like in a magazine and thought, oh, you know, I want to look like that in a bikini. I want to come across like that. But it is not glamorous. Um, I've been grumpy. My husband is just, I think he's ready to pack my bags. <laughs> And, um, and also, he's just in, in the way of family life, he's had to really take on our little boy and do a lot with him because I've not had the energy. It becomes much more than food and weight and becomes a, a much more empowering game and I think that is when it becomes really, really dangerous. So it's always just keeping your feet on the ground. It is not glamorous. To get and achieve that, there's so many more important things in life. It's just scary. It's the final week of the diet, and despite being completely exhausted, Louise still has to work. She's presenting the Close Show Live at Birmingham, and before it starts, the crew enjoy a hearty lunch. Yeah, I'm pissed off really now, to be really honest. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm hungry. You know what, I don't want to go over there and have heaps of chips and heaps of sandwiches, but just to have a couple on the side, something with a bit of flavour. I always don't want to sit with anybody because I feel like I want to kill them. <laughs> but um, I'm hungry today. I've got a bad headache and I just can't wait for today to be over. And to make things worse, Louise has lost her personal mobile. <laughs> my phone is in the fridge. Oh my god, do you know what? I was last night, I must have spent an hour looking for it. I was so shattered. Um, and when I got home, I was so hungry last night. The first thing I did was went to the fridge because I felt, um, uh, you know, when you're shaking, your hands are shaking. I was so hungry. Um, I went straight to the fridge and I must have just put my phone in there. <laughs> like an absolute nutcase. All right, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was really hungry last night. It's starting to um, really yeah. take its toll now. I've had enough. I don't know, it's just it's starting to run my life a little bit. Because I feel guilty even if I eat the smallest thing now, even if it's something that I've been told I'm allowed to eat. And then I'm beginning to f think in a different way about food. I can definitely understand how people get out of control when they're dieting and how people can go to the next level because you hit a target and then you give yourself another target and then another target. But I've got no energy at all. I feel really tired today. What I would give to put my coat on now and just go home. I'm Louise Redknapp and this is The Clove Show. <laughs> Ever professional, Louise puts on a bright face when on camera, but she's finding it difficult to concentrate, and it's much harder than usual to learn her lines. Well, I give it a shot, but I don't know it. On this special show from the Clove Show. Oh, Lord have mercy on my soul. I hope you've enjoyed your time here with us at Clove Show Live. See ya. Bye. See you, everyone. The shoes, they're off. <laughs> Hello. 
The next day, Louise starts to get serious stomach cramps and should be taking it easy. Instead, a fat-burning suit has arrived for her to try. I've done some strange things, but this is possibly the strangest. Celebrity mates Robbie Williams and Cheryl Tweedy both claim it can dramatically reduce your waist measurement, but Louise proves too ill to find out. I feel like I need to go to bed, like I feel like I'm going to be sick. I just keep throwing up all the time and now I'm at that stage where you know when you're sick and you've got no food to actually be sick that it just hurts your stomach so um, I just feel absolutely awful. Feeling fragile, Louise takes a break and attempts to get her strength back. She's still got to shift a few stubborn pounds if she's ever going to get into the size zero dress. She can't battle on alone any longer. Three days later, she resolves to finish the diet, so she heads back to Barry and LA for the final push. So I've come back to LA, um, just, it was getting very hard back in the UK, the diet was driving me absolutely crazy, so it's nice to be somewhere a bit different where it's all a little bit easier to be on a diet, believe it or not, um, and ultimately it's to get into this dress, which I need to do, which she just looks tiny today, I'm just having a, a fear day of, it's not going to happen, ever. In the desperate hope there's a shortcut to fitting in the dress, Louise is now willing to try everything LA has to offer. And the circulation starts getting From a plain old deep tissue massage. Yeah. I should have come here last time. <laughs> We've not done the diet. <laughs> to a futuristic mud shrinkage treatment called an alpha pod. What will be next in my quest for thinness? <laughs> She even tries having those final centimetres vacuumed up with the celeb's favourite endomology. This is so the final push. If I don't fit in the dress after this, then tough. And finally, she gives the ancient art of acupuncture a try. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That was very interesting. Louise finishes off a hard day with dinner, LA style. I ordered a, a salad to go. Actually, uh, weighs more than me now. <laughs> and this is just explains to you, LA, because look, this was my salad to go. That's the kind of salad I'd have at a buffet. <laughs> Maybe when they saw me, they thought she needs a good salad. I'm not quite sure. The next day, it's back to the old favourite of pain and torment, otherwise known as Barry's Boot Camp. Welcome back. You look great. <laughs> I don't feel great. You don't feel great. No, I'm hungry. Oh, no. You're hungry? <laughs> I'm really sorry. I know, you are. We'll go have a sandwich. Yeah. We'll go have a Subway sandwich. I'll go for a sandwich and have the chips. <laughs> I'll have the chips. I want the extra bread at oh, the, the table. Oh, the veggie bag and the chips. Just the bring whole it thing. All. Get changed. Let's okay. get started. You're here. I'm here. Do this. Okay. <laughs> Keep the abs in. Over the last 30 days, Louise has worked out for a total of 52 hours. <laughs> eaten less than 800 calories a day. Excuse me. Oh, with them? Yes, with them. Fine. And hated every minute of it. She came to me with a goal. And she doesn't look too thin. She doesn't look sick. She looks good. Fuck, 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 fuck. Okay, now that's letting me know that I'm doing my job! Size zero, here we come! It's exciting, isn't it? Come on, pass out! If you're gonna pass out, you might as well pass out at a good speed. Come on! Go, go, you're almost Seriously, done! Sorry. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, breathe, five, four, three, two, one! Yes! You took me out, really. Oh, so my legs wouldn't. My legs wouldn't go. 
<laughs> My head's not with it. No, Ooh. I know. And the jet lag and everything. Oh, I'm so tired. Yeah, I'm really knackered. Um, but I, he's great, Barry. He's very inspirational and he, he screams and shouts at you. And the first time I come, I found that really difficult. Um, but I think my energy levels are so low now that I'd find 10 minutes of his class hard work, let alone an hour. So I'm shattered. All right, I want a picture of you in the damn dress. <laughs> <laughs> the damn dress. Okay. The damn dress. I will, uh, I'll take one of my phone and send it to you. Alright. If I can get in it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get in it. <laughs> See you later. See you later. Cheers, Barry. Bye bye, Lou. Coming up, Louise begins to worry that she's in danger of becoming hooked. The more days you spend being hungry, the more I think you get used to just being hungry. And the feeling of being full is scary. Day 30, the final day of the diet. For the last month, Louise Redknapp has been starving herself down to an American size zero. In just 12 hours, she'll finally try on that tiny LA dress. But first, she visits Dr. Adam Carey to assess what harm the diet has done to her health. I just can't, I cannot stress how hard it's been. I know my health's declined. I, I just know how I feel. I don't think I've slept right through the night since I started this diet. Moment of truth. Every part of her body could be affected, so Dr. Carey gives her a final medical examination. So look, at the start of this process, you had a body mass index of 19.4, and today your body mass index is 17.6. So that's under that magic 18, so that's the beginning of a diagnosis of anorexia. I always considered myself as a healthy young woman, you know? I think you were before you started. Yeah, just not now. You know, you are unwell. I mean, you, people don't have four hours a night's sleep, have colds that last two and a half weeks and sore throats and have times vomiting and you know, it, 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 it lose concentration and become snappy. I mean, this is not normality. No. Yeah, these are all s symptoms of your lifestyle at the moment, which has resulted in you losing weight to attain an image which is frankly really, really unhealthy. And internally, things aren't much better. Her estrogen levels drop to that of a post-menopausal woman, which long-term can cause infertility and osteoporosis. And she lost a total of five pounds of muscle, which will have reduced her metabolic rate. That means that if she doesn't eat very carefully, she could end up with a higher percentage of body fat than when she started, which for many women leads to years of yo-yo dieting. I think your body will recover itself absolutely fine, but what it says is if you go through this in a prolonged period of time, over weeks, months, even years, then you will make yourself very, very unwell. Now only hours away from trying on the dress and finding out if she is a true size zero, Louise returns to celebrity photographer Neil Genoa to record her final shape. It's funny how you go into, in, into such a much sleeker shape if you were a car. It'd be the difference between a Porsche and a Ferrari, probably. Yeah, the engine doesn't work. You only go to 30 miles an hour. Yeah. And it makes it a huge noise. I mean, you're looking great photographically for the camera, but how do you feel? It's strange. On the outside, down the lens of a picture, I'm much better. But the harsh reality is on the I'm unwell. My concentration is crap, my skin is crap, my hair is lank, um, my body mass is 17.6 which is classed as a real dangerous low. I, I would have to say that you do look slightly, you come across as slightly mentally as a little lethargic, but I'm you do sorry. seem a bit, a bit almost dopey in, in effect. But you're really hungry, all you can think about is food, so I think you're conversation is really limited because you can't be bothered because yeah. your mind's elsewhere. Do you feel like you're being affected by it psychologically? If I was to be totally a hundred percent honest I think another couple of weeks and I think my head would go. Mm. 
Louise has certainly changed shape over the last month, but that transformation has come at a heavy price. The diet has affected her both physically and mentally. I think eventually you start, you know, going down a pattern of eating less and less and less and your body can cope with less and the, the, the more days you spend being hungry, the more I think you get used to just being hungry and the feeling of being full is scary. As Louise knows, many eating disorders start with a seemingly innocent crash diet. But thankfully, her 30 days of starvation are finally over. And now all that's left to do is to see if she fits in that size zero dress. I could have the biggest event of my life coming up where I wanted to be a certain size and to look amazing for the world to see. But whatever the outcome of that would be, wouldn't have been worth what I feel I've put myself through and my little boy and my husband and my mum and dad because they've seen me at real lows and I'm not that kind of person. I'm a real get on with it girl and I haven't this last few weeks. I've been a real big sensitive crybaby. Well, I'm going to see if I can get into the damn dress. It's not called a dress, it's called a damn dress. I can't even refer to it as a dress because I refer to dresses as nice things. This is not. So, in the dress, the body fits in the dress, but the face is knackered. <laughs> I can now fit in a, what is a so-called size zero. I hate it, I don't feel any way, I just want to get out of it. For me, this dress just screams so many crappy times that that outweighs any kind of feeling of well, I've lost a bit of weight, and I'm sure if I was to go out in this tonight, people would go to me, you look well. But the first thing my mum said to me when she came in today was, there's just nothing in your eyes. You were just so over it all. So I think it's people that really know you and know you as a person that can see what dieting, extreme dieting has done to me. In 30 days, Louise has gone from a healthy 7 stone 10 to a dangerously underweight 6 stone 13, losing a total of 11 pounds. Her BMI is now 17.6, so low it's within the diagnosis of anorexia. Her bust is now a 32B, her waist is 24, and her hips are 32. She's gone from a UK size 8 to a tiny size 4 an American size zero. With the diet finally behind her, Louise's best mate come round to start the healing process by taking her out for dinner. Girls, there's one thing I've got to do before we go out and get sloshed, and that is throw the dress away. What do you think? Yeah, do it. Get rid of it. In the bin. She's a nightmare at times. She was short with me, she was short with Charlie. And she's not like that as a person, really. She's very, you know, she's that bright. She's very, um, she's just a very happy girl, you know. And when, when she was, you could see there was a real change in her. Hi. <laughs> I'm feeling it. I feel guilty. Just it. Come on, let's go out. It's gone, it's gone. And this. Definitely. This Definitely. is going. It's horrendous watching your daughter sort of feel hungry all the time, be low, be miserable, um, and losing her quality of life that she'd normally be doing. So that's, that's hard to watch as a mum. I just want to get my Louise back to how she was. This is by far the hardest thing I've ever done to date. It, just the whole experience in, of dieting under a pressure. But for me, it would only be worth it if I've helped people to be aware, or more aware of how bad crash dieting is for you um, and, and not to do it. I think there's a few people sitting at home and they're going to rethink, you know, putting themselves through a major crash diet, crash diet, then yeah, it's worth it. Just want to say, I've got to cheers, food and sexy curves.
There's another chance to catch it with last week's Benny Dorm at 11 here on ITV1, and it's the funny side of rehab afterwards, one-off comedy with the Abbey at 11.30. That's all to come this Wednesday night, after the news, next. <laughs>